to Towering Pines for another edition of... Oh, Robert's 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 Hello and welcome back to Towering Pines. I'm Cassie and this is Tai Tai. And today we're just going to give you a quick tour around the garden because there has been a lot that has been happening here since our last couple of videos. So here we go. So here is a quick overview of just kind of what the whole garden looks like from up on the porch. So as you can see, there is quite a lot going on here. So now I'm going to take you down and show you what's going on. But first, up here we have some seedlings that are hardening off, getting used to the weather outside. Um, I think we have some tomatoes, maybe some peppers. I think we have some pansies. And then over here, some wisteria that we actually got from our wisteria plants, but our wisteria plants were growing into the fence, so we had to cut them down, but we were able to plant the seeds from them, so we're hoping to regrow some more wisteria. So that's kind of what's up here. Hi, Tai Tai. Hi, Asher. <laughs> all right oh and we moved the composter up here because it was a pain to try and lug all the compost down all the way to the bottom of the yard so it's much easier to just have it up here on the porch and put stuff don't in there open it. no don't open it it's gross looking <laughs> Doo -doo -doo. there we go as you can see we have a lot of trees with leaves on them which is exciting! We've got lots of green stuff. Um, I won't go into specific varieties right now. If you want to see those, we had a tree planting video. I think it's called Planting a Forest. Um, if you're interested in the specific varieties. Over here, we have Jerusalem artichokes. Which, they're related to sunflowers. But they have roots that are kind of like potatoes. So, you eat the roots, basically like potatoes. But the plants themselves grow up into these giant kind of sunflower looking things. So they'll make kind of like a wall of green along this fence here. Now we have a bin of weeds that I've been pulling up from somewhere. So those will go into compost at some point. Um, let's see. Our pomegranate trees, unfortunately, especially this one, haven't been doing too well. Um, this one doesn't have any leaves on it except for way down here. And you don't want leaves at the very bottom because a lot of trees will be grafted onto a different kind of root because different roots are like more they're tougher more strong more disease resistant so if you have leaves growing down below the graft then they won't be pomegranate leaves they'll be or they may be pomegranate leaves but they won't be the same kind of pomegranate as is grafted on or they might not be pomegranate um we have some strawberries in the ground we have I don't know which variety this is, but we have June-bearing strawberries and ever-bearing strawberries. So June-bearing will give you a big crop of strawberries around June, and then ever-bearing will give you smaller crops throughout, I think, the summer, basically. Okay, so this is our herb and flower bed. This is primarily my bed um, because herbs and flowers are more my wheelhouse. Uh, a lot of years of experience with this. I grew up with a mother that was a trained florist and a gardener, and I think I've had chives growing outside wherever I lived since I was a kid. So um, we've got herbs that had already been established at the four corners that were in an herb tower at one point that are now in the bed and they are thriving. Um, we also have these chives. These are, I like to call my heirloom chives. I uh, brought them when we moved down here from the northeast, and before that I had divided them from my mother's chives, um, and those had come from a previous house where they lived before, and I actually plan to take some to my brother and sister-in-law this summer. Um, we have a number of flowers in here. Um, our nasturtiums, unfortunately, some of them are not looking too hot. We had an unexpected freeze last week and they didn't get covered very well and some of them don't look too hot. Although, there is some new growth coming in so we're hopeful that most of them will survive. We did have a couple that shriveled up completely. but um, We also have some butterfly peas here. These are a beautiful blue color if they survive. We also have some snapdragons. Those got thrown in last minute. Tonight I put in some pansies at either end. Um, I grew these from seed. Not all of my flowers from seed did very well, but I did have a couple pansies that are looking pretty healthy. 
I grew them under the grow light and then I moved them outside to a small um, potted trough where they've been outside most nights except when it got really cold then we brought them in. And then here we also have some dahlias. We have a couple different varieties. I put a bunch of these in the ground um, about a month ago and the frost killed most of them off but I still had some in my the same trough where I had the pansies. So we've tried sticking a couple more in the ground and a couple in this bed and we'll see which ones do better and if they survive. We also have parsley down here. Two different varieties of cilantro. One is a slow bolt. Um, bolting is when it goes to seed and flower and turns into coriander. And that happens very easily in hot weather, which we get a lot of down here. So I tried a slow bolt variety this year to see if it slows it down a little. But I also planted some regular as well. So we're just gonna compare and see. They were planted around the same time. And then we have basil here coming up. Um, that I've just started picking some leaves off of. We had spaghetti last night and I used some of that. Um, tasted delicious. So I think that's everything. Oh, and down here, I almost forgot. This here is baby's breath, which you may be familiar with. It's those little tiny white flowers that you find at a florist, at a grocery store. It's used as a very common filler for floral arrangements, uh, particularly with roses. Um, like I said, my mom was a trained florist, so I grew up very familiar with it, but I have never grown it before, so I'm curious to see if it does well and if it looks the same as the stuff you buy in the grocery store. So, I th Oh, and the only other thing that was planted here is lavender. I'm having a huge battle getting the lavender to grow. Um, we sprouted some seeds in the fridge, which was what we were supposed to do planted them. I had three sprouts come up and then they disappeared yesterday. So we think something ate them, unfortunately. I'm not sure what's going to happen there. I may have to find another source for lavender. So I think that's all on this bed for now. Um, we got three grapevines, which was a surprise because we thought we were only going to get one. Um, but instead we got three of the same variety. So this one over here isn't looking too hot. But the other two have leaves on them now and are look like they're doing well. Um, so we're still going to have twice as many grapes, it looks like, as we were expecting. Thank you, Hello. Oh, the snake? There was a snake hiding under this bench at one point. past two days we checked and this is the third and he's not here. He may have just run away because there were too many humans. So yes, we have a bench now and we have some log seating as well, aka a ninja warrior no. course. No. You want to show him? Yes. You want to run across? No, no, I can't do that. Okay, well, actually, you want to show easy. him? It's way too easy. Too easy? Okay. See? Um, we have a bird bath with a fountain, but it's a solar powered fountain, which is nice. Clean energy, woohoo! And but yucky. And then over here, this is actually really interesting. I don't know how easy it's gonna be to see, but we have, hang on, let me find some. There are some ants on these little tiny red things. This is one of our cherry trees. Um, and what happens is the cherry trees will make these little red things, and the red things Put out these it puts out like some sort of sweet thing that the ants like and the ants because they find this new because they found this food source will be very like territorial and protect the tree so any bugs that want to come and eat the tree the ants will chase off so symbiotic relationship between the ants and the tree some more strawberries um i think that's a persimmon that's leafing out. Our other pomegranate is doing okay. Over here, I believe this is our Granny Smith apple. It's hard to tell now because there are less of them, but at one point there were a bunch of aphids under the leaves and on like the bases of the leaves and there were a bunch of ants all over the aphids because Aphids are bad for the plants and they eat the plants, but they make this like sticky stuff that ants also love. So the ants will like take the sticky stuff from the aphids and then they'll protect the aphids from predators. Um, we're not going to be getting any fruit from these trees 
this first year you take the flowers off the first year so that they put most of their energy into just growing stronger. Um, so since we're not getting fruit anyways, we're just going to leave the aphids to attract ladybugs. And the ladybugs will eat the aphids and they'll also eat the aphids in future years when they come to attack things. Um, we have some asparagus planted over here. Our garlic is doing well. These peas actually we planted last year and they sort of came back after the winter. So that's kind of interesting. This is where we're planning to put one of our gates into the next section of the food forest. Um, we have a couple of fruit bushes. I'm not sure what kind this is, but we have some different raspberries and blackberries planted along the fence. There's one there, I think, and then there are a few back along that edge of the fence. So, and then we have our annual garden. Hello, Daddy. Hello. So over here, we've got a couple of new beds that we're working on putting in here. Over here, this entire bed is just filled with potatoes. So, we've got a bunch of potatoes going right now. And then this is purple broccoli. Um, it has a lot of flowers because this plant we're letting um, grow the flowers so we can hopefully get some seeds to replant. But, um, hang on, get the video to focus focus there we go so that is purple broccoli and I like to if you pull them open it's hard to do on video but you can pull them open and see like the yellow inside then you can just eat them so we have some carrots coming up in here over here we have some peas some Swiss chard and some cilantro in between the Swiss chard um, we have some lettuce over here, which I think still tastes pretty bitter, which is sad. We haven't really gotten any good lettuce. I think this is a random carrot that somehow ended up here. No. More Swiss chard. Some beans. Yeah. Oh, and then there's this blank space here between the bench and this going to be very pretty flower bed. Um, and the plan is to put a fire pit here, and we actually found one on the side of the road for free, which is nice. So, that's gonna hopefully come in here. And I think that's about it for the main garden. Quick thing I forgot to mention, um, you can kind of tell where we are. There's the entrance over there. So, right over here, we have a bunch of watermelon sprouts. So, we didn't plant these. What happened was we had some leftover watermelons and some of them started rotting so we just kind of left them in various spots around the garden, buried them in wood chips, stepped in them a couple of times which was kind of gross. But apparently you're supposed to let watermelons rot if you want them to, um, if you want the seeds to develop enough to start growing watermelon plants. So we buried a watermelon here, it rotted, and now all the seeds are making tons of little tiny watermelon plants. So this isn't actually an issue. Because as you can see, we have a lot of open space that way. So we're just going to kind of let it go that way and we'll get some more watermelons this year. So, yay, watermelons! Quick update. Um, it's been a couple of days since I filmed the first clip. So we've moved the fire pit in here. It is not ready to use yet. We need to dig out the wood chips around it. Make it a little bit more safe. Um, we also have these archways now. Which are just tea posts and cattle panels. So have some different plans for those. No, oh, oops, sorry. Um, and we have one over this entranceway too. And we're gonna be doing an entrance to the food forest, to the next section of the food forest, right here. And then over there, I don't know if you can tell, one of the panels is cut away now, so we're gonna put an archway there. Um, let's see, over here, doo -doo -doo, walking under the archway. Over here, I have a couple things planted. It's not doing so well. There are a lot of weeds. Um, but I have some beans planted here, which are doing okay. And some peas. And then I've got some nasturtiums farther down as well. I had... Actually, let me show you the plants that I have that were doing well. And I'll tell you. So, over here... I'm walking over the next section of the food forest. There's this 
little section back here where we have a few things planted. So over here, we have two little sections of, these are called Egyptian walking onions because like they grow the onions on top of the plant as opposed to in the ground. And then when like at the end of the year or the end of the season that they grow in or whatever, the, the onion plants like topple over and the onions land on the ground. So it's almost like they're walking as they plant more of themselves. So we have a couple um, different beds with those and we call them Ewos for short, E-W-O, for Egyptian walking onion. And then these right here are Mongolian giant sunflowers. So they're supposed to get to like 12 to 14 feet tall. So that'll be interesting to see. I have a couple of these planted over by the porch, but I got, I haven't seen any come up. So I don't know if they're just not getting enough sun or too many weeds buried too far by the wood chips. Don't know. So I might try some other things there. I'm going to take you down to, we have a couple of blueberry bushes planted down here. Doo -doo -doo. Um, I believe one of them is a kablooey blueberry and one of them is a pink lemonade blueberry, I think. I don't remember for sure. Um, and you can't really tell right now, but we've been putting a bunch of coffee grounds around the bases of the blueberries to compost down and make the soil more acidic because blueberries like more acidic soil. We have some wood pallets. I think we were going to try and build a really big composting bin to really get it going. Our compost up on the deck hasn't really gotten going yet that we know of, so that's kind of the plan right now. Over here, we're piling up some cardboard, saving up the cardboard to continue laying it out farther on the yard and so we can put more wood chips on top, extend the garden even more. Um, I think that's it for the back. Let's pop up and say hi to Pippin and then we'll move to the front. Hello, puppy. Are you tired? Too hot, hiding in the shade. All right, bye. So over here, we're in the front now. Um, we have some daffodils that have already bloomed and died and deer don't eat those, which is really nice because we can get some flowers every year. Um, flowers, I don't know what kind. I think those are flowers, again, I don't know what kind. Over here, we call this the deer gun. It's actually a deer sprinkler, it's motion activated. So if any deer come over, try to eat our garden, get sprayed by this. So I pr approached it from behind to make sure it was off, which it is, thankfully, otherwise I could have gotten sprayed. We have a row of garlic along here, which normally deer don't eat, but I think for whatever reason, when they were first coming up, the deer were eating like the little shoots, I think. So, I don't know. Um, we've been actually getting some flowers over here, now that we have the deer sprinkler, aka the deer gun. Um, so I believe these are irises. They're very pretty. I actually haven't been over here and seen them up close before. Um, more daffodils that have already bloomed. And then I think these were tulips that have also bloomed and kind of faded. So, oh, and we put some bricks around this and it looks a lot nicer now. So I think that's about it.